So today we're talking about sacred cows and pigeonholes and barred doors and royal edicts. I just kind of got on a roll with things that keep us small and, and in a confined space and a confined way of doing things. So Kevin was talking about sacred cows. That, that term does come from India and it's from their sacred scriptures where one of their gods, and I apologize, I forget which one it was, but he, he was going to kill a cow in order to have food for the people. And the cow begged, oh, please don't kill me. I will give you milk for the people. And the cow was a representative of Mother Earth. And so from that time on, there was um, an injunction against killing any cows. They were considered sacred. However, that scripture, like the Hebrew scriptures, was interpreted literally. Ask yourself this. Was there a God standing there talking to a cow <laughs> who was, the cow was down on its knees pleading for its life? It's a story. It's a story meant to express the idea that the earth is our mother and we need to care for her, not slaughter the earth. Take note, we might remember this story. But because it was interpreted literally, then ever since then, people in India who practice the Hindu religion don't eat cattle. But the challenge with it, first of all, there were Hindus long before this particular scripture was created, like at least 300 years before, eating meat without any problem. Okay, so it's not innate to the religion, it's just something that came to be. Hmm. <laughs> Come on in, God. You can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it might be, it might be, they, they came right out of the field. So the thing that's important to realize about that is not that it's good to eat cows or not good to eat cows, it's about when something becomes fixed and you can't look at a bigger picture. So in India, not only do sacred cows cause a lot of nuisance factor with the traffic, as you can imagine, if they're just wandering. I mean, picture in our road system, if you had cows just wandering freely, um, and you're driving along at high speed, and there's the cow, and, and so they've, there's that nuisance, but more importantly, there are other people in India who are not Hindu. There are many Muslims, there are Christians, there are, I'm sure, people who don't subscribe to any of that, there are probably Buddhists. And if they don't subscribe to that sacred cow, they are considered less than, sometimes they're, you know, just terrible things that happen because a story that was taken literally became something that nobody can think around that. And why am I talking about this? Because in our lives, we have sacred cows. I, I was saying at the earlier service that just at Unity Community, for example, we have some sacred cows. Well, we don't have sacred cows. We, we, made, a, we made a point from the very beginning. There will be no sacred cows. And so... Sometimes, though, when we decide we're going to change something, there's a reaction like, no, we can't do this, because it's a sacred cow. 
So when we change the peace song, for example, many of you have come here from other Unity churches, and pretty much in most Unity churches, they end the service by getting in a circle and singing the peace song. How many of you have done that before in some place you've come from? Look around, lots of you. So then people come here and say to me, oh, but you don't do the peace song. And can we do the peace song? And <laughs> Vito from the music department. <laughs> um, anyway, it, w it was a decision that was made for musical reasons, and we chose another song that we liked better because the peace song, lovely as it is and endeared as it is to many people's hearts, it was a secret cow. And we... And so we felt free to choose something else because we weren't going to be ruled by sacred cows. Another one that's more current is standing in the circle. So when we were at the Grange, we tried not standing in a circle and many people were very upset with that. They go, no, no, we have to be in the circle. So we got back in the circle, even though it was getting increasingly difficult to get in a circle as we grew and grew at the Grange. But then we came here, and we, tr we did try it one week to see can we get in a circle. It was a mess. <laughs> you know, people are trying to climb over all these chairs and get in a circle, and the kids are coming in. And, and so for some of you, you may feel upset. And it's one thing to just miss something that you really liked. There's nothing unspiritual about that. But if you get your knickers in a knot because something has, has changed that you really wanted, then you have a problem. Think about holidays. We're getting into the holiday season. How many of you have the feeling that you have to have turkey? And if you have vegetarian friends or relatives, tough luck. It's Thanksgiving. The turkey is a sacred cow. <clears throat> this is the sacred turkey, right? How many of you feel like it must happen on Thursday? Because that's the day it is. And the fact that you might have grown kids who have in-laws who expect them also to be there on Thursday because that's the way it is. Tough luck, they can just eat several Thanksgiving dinners because we can't move it from the date or Christmas. Oh, what happens? if your grown kids want to celebrate with their in-laws or they just want to do it at their house or they have friends. But, but it's Christmas Day. It's the day Jesus was born. No, it wasn't. <laughs> it's the day the church fathers decided, like 300 years after the birth of Jesus, whenever he was born, they said, okay, there's this big winter solstice thing that goes on, and we want to get those pagans into the church. Let's say Jesus was born then. They all agreed, and so Jesus had a new birthday. <laughs> but because they have declared that, we couldn't possibly change the day that we celebrate Christmas, could we? And if you don't have that flexibility, you have a sacred cow. Now, pigeonholes are a little different. Pigeonholes come from, uh, I think, I read this, but now I'm going to forget all the dates because that's what I do. <laughs> but it was sometime in the 1500s when they had nests for pigeons. They had these little holes, and they kept the pigeons in there. And then, about 100 years later, they created these desks that had all these holes in them, compartments, and they looked like the nests for pigeons. So these were called pigeonholes in the desks. And then, a while later, it came into the vernacular where you pigeonhole somebody. 
Like, think about actors, for example. There are certain actors, well, they'd always make a good villain, wouldn't they? They just look like a villain because they've played villains over and over and over again, and now they've been pigeonholed. And they, they could never get a job as, a, as an act, a hero. Who would believe that? That person can't be a hero. That person pi- is pigeonholed as a villain. So the question is for us, where have we pigeonholed ourselves or other people? Like we pigeonhole our partners in marriage all the time. All right, I I got this one's number. I've been living with this one for so long, I know exactly what that person is like, right? And then there's no room for the person to grow. Why are you looking at each other? (laughs) (laughs) there's no room for growth when you have a pigeonhole Rebecca's story was so amazing I asked her to come and do it today because I'd heard that story before and she had pigeonholed herself she wasn't a runner her dad was the runner not her, she couldn't do that and yet Within a year, she's doing triathlons. There was so much more to her than what she knew. And that is true for every one of us. Just ask yourself right now, where have you pigeonholed yourself? And who are you complying with when you pigeonhole yourself? So it might be, for example, your dad wanted you to be a doctor, and so you went to medical school, for example, or whatever it is, or you didn't go to medical school, you always wanted to, but you were not a candidate in your parents' mind, and so you didn't do it, but it was what you always wanted to do. What have you done or not done? Because somebody pigeonholed you. The reason that we do these things is because we want to be safe. We want, to, we want to stick with the program that's getting us good results. We want to be the kind of kid that our parents love, whatever that might be. We, we want to get the good stuff. So we either learn to do it by being a pleaser or by being a bully or by being a manipulator or whatever it takes. We just want that love because it makes us feel safe. Bruce Lipton has a beautiful... YouTube video on stress and the cells of our bodies and how our cells either move toward stress or they move toward growth. But they can't do both at the same time. They're doing one or the other. Think about it if there's a disaster and you just happen to have a little fallout shelter and you, <clears throat> you go down in that fallout shelter and so do all the other people in the town. And everybody's in their fallout shelter and hoping their canned food lasts. What's not happening in town? Growth. There's no business going on. Everybody's down in their fallout shelter. The town is not growing in any way. We do that in our lives. We go into our fallout shelters. We we focus on what will keep us safe instead of opening up to grow, to awaken. And our real safety, our one safe place is not in the fallout shelter hiding. Our one safe place is opening up to the all of who we are, to our I am that is unlimited. Listening to the voice that is spurring us to ever, ever, ever open more. To follow that. That is our one safe place. So hold that idea. Hold that idea in your hearts and your minds as you listen to the song. Make a decision for yourself to 
really take that one safe place into space. 